Hi everyone, Brett back out to do scale modeling with part 22 of this long running build series of the Airfix 172B17G and Bomber Resupply Kit. This set right here. So, last time on this station, we were painting this up. I think the weathering on it and the shading and the fading on it looks pretty good. Definitely faded, olive drab. So one thing I did while we were away was I painted the support vehicles. Olive drab. These two AK real colors right here. Same ones I used on the aircraft, only I didn't fade them as much. So we've got the tanker, got the bomb cart, got the wagon, we've got a wrecker, the tires, the hubs. This part is one of the flaps. You see here. This part broke off of this side, and I didn't know that when I painted it, so I'm going to paint it by hand and glue it back on. All right, some more light on the subject. And we're gonna right now detail some of these up. Put some silver in there, put some rust streaks, touch up the seats a little bit, paint some black, paint some of the suspension in the under parts. Finish getting everything put together. Some wheels together. These have been painted in Tamiya. No, this was Guns Tire Black. That would be... Where did I put it? Well, it's somewhere. I've got so many paints out here because I have too many projects on the go. Not like any of you guys ever had that problem, huh? Isn't that like one of our favorite things to do? Have 20 things on the go at once? Well, you just have to take my word for it. It was Guns Mr. Color Tire Black. I just don't know where I put it. Anyway. So. We built this up, built it up, built it up to this point right here where we don't have the top on. So we need to paint the trim around the glass, which is C5, which is this one. And the easiest way for me to do this, maybe different for you, I'm going to cut this off of here. Like so. I'm going to move all these parts out of the way that I'm going to use right away. Move this out. So we're concentrating on this right now. So. Take my sander, I'm going to sand the top through top where it just cut. And once I get it all smooth, across the top there, I need to paint the frame olive drab and then the wipers black. So, this is a candle holder. Now what's good about this candle holder is it perfectly sits Tamiya and Kirio colors and Mr. Hobby, Mr. Color Paints. So when I'm doing small things like this, I find I'm not very good with a brush. So I just take a toothpick or a cocktail stick for all you people 
across the ocean. I was probably would have adhered better if I would have primered it, but then I would have either had the mask or primer it just like this. You can see I kept these sprue attached on here so I had something to hold on to. Unfortunately this is raised enough where I can get in there when I mess up like that. Once it's dry, I can just wipe it out. It's not dry yet. Turn over to the other side. I'm not one of those guys who's so steady with a paintbrush so I can do this by hand. Get around the whole edge and edge. Don't need to worry about the bottom edge as much because it's on the bottom. Okay, now you see I messed that up right there. As soon as it's dry, I'll show you how easy it is to clean up. Now, hopefully without making the same kind of smudge. I'm going to paint the wipers. Maybe I should wait till I clean this up. No, the mess is on the back. But see, this is K Real Colors lacquer paint. So it dries quickly. You can see there. The smudge is gone. Wipers are on this side. For this, I'm using Tamiya Rubber Black. All right, same thing. Toothpick slash cotton bud. Same thing. I'm not going to hold it because my hands shake. Make sure there's not a big blob on the end. Or a hair like that. And same thing, if you think you got a little too much over, wait for it to dry, scrape it away. So. That's done. Sit it aside. Just stuck my finger in the paint lid. Okay. So, on the grills of these two vehicles, I don't have a grill, it must be electric. I am going to use um, Tamiya Paneline Wash to give depth. I always shake it up real good then look at the bottom. If I see bubbles in the bottom, no sediment, then I know it's shaking up okay. And because I don't want to spill this, I'll use my display holder. Or I could use, since my display holder normally just holds glue, I do have this. Ultimate Products Holder, which does the exact same thing. And I'm just going to run this across. It's going to fill in all the hole gaps. Make sure you keep watching the end. You see that big drip form in there? It'll drip right in the middle of your work. So, and you'll see some areas a lot more than others, but if you clean this off, the brush will suck up the excess and help you spread it around. So, that one, maybe I should zoom in a little more. Same thing here, just run it across, let it spread itself out. See, that's what I mean by the drip. Yeah, I'm just patting it. I'm not going to drag it across. 
That's what I meant by the big drip on there. Watch out. But it's good to see the mistakes live in person. I get into the headlight covers too. There. Now when that's dry, it'll dry back and you'll still have your grill parts. And if you're worried about it, just take a clean Q-tip, run it across, and it'll soak up any extra as well, and make it all even. There you go. Detail in the grill. Look at that one, it's dry. And while I have the black wash out, I'm going to give a little around these wheels. And again, if you think it's too much, just dab that on there. Suck out the extra. And when it dries, it'll look fine. Same on these wheels. Especially down in the recesses where they're supposed to be hollow. Get it off the surface. Leave it in the recesses. Got some nice detail going in there. There's also some grills right here that I want to get some of this into. You can see I didn't rehydrate the brush because I don't want tons going in there. I don't want it flowing everywhere. Just want to highlight these grills. Okay, then check over any place else you might want to add a little extra soot, dirt, grime. around the fuel tank. As you know they're not going to be real neat. They're going to be filling up the fuel in a hurry. Along the drive line, or pan, differential, transfer case. Anywhere this might get oil or grime in between the leaf springs. And you know, if you don't like black, yeah. You can use a little brown, maybe change it up a little bit. Again, make sure that you see bubbles in the bottom so you know you've got it all shaken up well. And same thing. Watch out for that big bubble on the brush. So, on the leaf springs. It might be better to have brown on leaf springs because mud. Maybe some just inside the wheel wells. And again with some of these other tires, because these are tires for the trailer. I'm not going to worry about the, these are dually, so I'm not going to worry about the inside tires. But these four outside tires, use brown instead of black. You know, it's been running across a muddy airfield in the UK during the war.
So there you go. So you can grab all your tires. This, sorry, this is the hose for refueling. It sits like this in the back of the truck. So I'm going to paint that rubber black. I'm going to highlight and detail these parts here. Again, check your references. You know, where the fifth wheel hooks up would be covered with grease, so it's perfect for the black. And this one I am going to use a lot because it's going to, it would have grease and everything on it, so I want it to be more. And I'm going to hit those joints there. I'm going to hit in between the dualies. Okay, I'm going to leave that like that. Now, don't want red. Got my set of AK weathering pencils, and we get the rust one out. There's medium, dark, and light. I'm going to take medium, and I'm going to hit some of these raised details, just lightly, just some random places like here. I put the bumper on crooked, so it looks like it would hit something. So it's going to need to have a little damage and a little rust on the corner. Maybe a little bit on these headlights, covers. Okay, maybe some under here, because obviously the underneath is going to have more rust on it than anything. Now these can be used wet or dry. I'm using them dry right now. When I do some streaking, I'll show you about the wet. I find these pretty useful and helpful. Just touch up some highlights. So I'm, plus I'm going to come by with silver and hit some of the raised detail too. Here's where the tire goes. Spare tire, sorry. Okay. Make sure you side some thinner or some panel line wash on my finger. Be careful with that because I touched where my fifth wheel goes. Alright, so I continue working on the bottom of these. Move these out of the way. Now I'm talking about uh, using these pencils wet. This is just water I keep. These are watercolor pencils after all. Get it wet, and then I'm going to put it on the muffler and along the exhaust pipe. And it wouldn't hurt to have done this before I assembled it, but I wasn't sure how I wanted to weather it. But as you can see, because it's a watercolor pencil, how it's working wet. So, thrusting that out, giving it a little bit of texture. I can toss some pigments on there if I need to. The same thing to this one. Get wet again. You don't have to over wet it. You just want to activate it. Now I'm not going to, well, I may, but I'm going to use a darker one for some of the, like these clamps right here. So you can see that's got clamps where they would have clamped the muffler on there. And when it starts to dry out, don't be afraid to re-wet a little bit. Now 
Now like under here. You can see I'm not quite getting under there. So what you can do Alright she There we go. So I'm gonna wet this and I'm putting an extra amount on here. And I'm gonna just take my brush and push it underneath there and finish painting all around. And because these are watercolors, if you mess up, you can just wash it off. See, you got it wet. Getting it underneath with the brush. Like that. A little up here, a little back here. Okay. And I think if you get it wet and you just go like this onto something, I'm just using my mat. Dip your brush in it. And that works just the same way. So it's just a new tool. Is it necessary? No. Is it required? No. There are a million ways to rust mufflers and exhaust pipes. This is just one. And it's the first time I've used it, so I want to try it out. So that's still wet. This one is now dry. Okay. Now you can see it could use a little touch up, so. And, uh, a little more right there. Get my ends that I missed. Underneath. Underneath on the side. You know, and if this starts to dry out, touch a little water there, touch a little water there. It's watercolor. And, you know, honestly, these are going to be on a diorama and no one's going to see underneath of them. So how much you do is up to you. So, there you go. It's all touched up, looking good. I'm going to grab the dark rust. Again, get it wet. Because I'm only going to use this in a fine, small area on this one, right here. Because I just want to darken up these clamp areas. Give it a little difference. Maybe touch more dark on the end. Then, say... Uh, let's take this. So you want to do a little... Put it on there. It's just like using your oil paints or your enamel washes or anything else. And then lighter color, same thing. Let that dry, see how it looks. If you don't like it, you just wash it off. You want it to be subtle. Yes, there's going to be rust on it, but you want it to be subtle. Same thing with these axles. And then... Take some of it and spread it around on the leaf springs. And you want to use an old unpleasant brush. I wasn't thinking and I used a good atlas brush. And 
And rust is random. Rust is nature. Rust goes where it wants. Now the good thing about these is they will also leave a texture behind if you let them. A little bit darker one. Those of you who live in places where you see a lot of rusty vehicles know how this should look. I live in an extremely dry climate, so I'm not around a lot of rust. Then you're going to want to do the frame. In the direction that, you know, rain would come down. Pool up. Same up here. A little darker. And of course, you can break out the one that's lighter. Across the top. And you know, fortunately they're named. Well, this just became a weathering brush. So, let's go back and look at these. See this one? See the darker and the lighter highlights? It might be a little thick, but it's not completely dry. And you want to have a little bit of texture on there. And then, you know, like I said, spread it around to other areas. In the direction that the vehicle mainly travels, which is forward. These are war vehicles. They got used a lot. They got abused. There wasn't a lot of time to clean them up. Don't believe me, just go online and look. That's why so many were scrapped at the end of the war. So there you go. A little bit of rust. Let's see. And I'm not trying to make it even anywhere, because rust is not even. You can see right here, some dry spots. Just watch your little thing right here. Rehydrate it. Spot's gone. That's a beauty using water colors. You don't have to use white spirits or lacquer thinners or anything else to clean them up. So, the truck, we're going to rust out the whole frame rail and the stand that it sits on that's over there. And then the interiors. Pull this aside. Always clean up your mess so you don't drag it around other places. And, of course, watercolor cleans up. Okay. Now, we have a silver prism pencil right here. 
prism color. This is not watercolor. This I want to use to touch up places where there might be some bare metal showing through. The handles are the grabbing when they get in. I want to do the center of the steering wheel. Maybe around the frame of the seats because the seats were metal or had metal frames. Back here on the tow hook. So yes, I'm using a lot of pencils for this. Just because the detail is so small, the pencils are sharp. I can go in here sideways with the pencil like this and get a perfect line on the raised detail. Some more in here on these teeth. You can see what the pencil did to the teeth. They made them look like actual teeth. You didn't get things anywhere else. Around this frame here. See, maybe a little bit of scuffing on the floor. On the running board where they got in and climb in and out all the time. The latch of the toolbox area. And where they climb on. And there's a watercolor version of this in the kit. But I don't want to use a watercolor for this part. Around the fuel filler. This hook because it would have been used a lot. Coupling and uncoupling. Plus, after we get some of the silver down, we can put a little bit of rust on it. Underneath here, just highlight a couple places. You know, right here. Could have been the bottom in the truck out. Same back here, the bottom of the differential. Where the truck would have hit it, maybe some rocks. That was climbing over. You know, even on, do a little touch ups on the exhaust pipe, give a little silver highlights in there. Everything wouldn't have been a rust. We do have a lot of off-road vehicles up here, so we may not have a rust, but I've seen a lot of metal scrapes on things. Bottoming out, going over rocks. You're pulling too much. You know, you get these pins that are holding the axle to the leaf springs, get them. Maybe touch up along the top with some parts of the leaf springs, just a little bit, randomly again. A bit along the drive line, the transfer case. Just various places. No pattern. You know, there's some brackets holding these tanks in. Maybe touch them a little bit. Another toolbox. They'd have been opening and closing a lot right around here. Over here. Maybe highlight some of the screws that are holding things on. Some of the bolts. The door handle. A little bit to the hinges, maybe. And these bolts. Maybe touch up your lug nuts a little bit. Take off some of that black. So 
especially when you're looking at your lug nuts, you can see them. See some of the highlights around there. You know, maybe hit the front of this. Because this is just the same as the rest. If you don't like it, clean it off. You know, these bolts right here in the front of the bumper. This is hard to do when I'm not looking at it. And obviously you don't want an obnoxious silver. So, I think we've been at this for a little over 30 minutes. I just wanted to give you a little demonstration of how I'm going to weather some of this up a little bit. See, again, there's a little spot there. It's just a little too intense. Got my water. Got my brush. That spot there. Even this long later. Activated. Run down. Just like that. So, thanks for watching part 22. Part 23 will be along shortly.